Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here and welcome to a first look at Prismata. This is a game that I received code 2 to review, so I've been playing a bit of that over the last few days. It's a very interesting new concept, at least to me, that the best I can do to describe it is as a turn-based version of a real-time strategy game like StarCraft or Command and Conquer. It's also got some card game elements in it, but you'll see that as we look at some of the gameplay. Uh, it does have a single-player campaign, as well as player versus player with a ranked ladder. I think they're planning to run tournaments, too. Uh, it's available in early access, as can be seen right here. The price on Steam is $24.99. There will be a link in the description if you'd like to check that out. Uh, right off the bat, though, I want to get something out of the way, as there is one misgiving that I have about this game, though it's not a huge one. They do have a microtransaction shop, but as far as I can tell, looking at all of these things that you get for purchasing additional content, uh, it's not gameplay affecting. It looks like it's all cosmetic uh, skins and uh, so on and so forth, Then, as well as additional uh, campaign episodes but they do offer the ability to purchase a Founders Edition on Steam right now, which supposedly gives all the DLC. Now, I am not a person who thinks that cosmetic microtransactions are particularly egregious, but I always do have a bit of misgiving when I see them in a game that isn't free to play. Now, you can earn rewards by playing daily, uh, right down here. They have shard packs to buy too, uh, again, this is a mechanic you most often see in free-to-play games, so it has been creeping into other titles these days. I, I often feel that a game that you have purchased outright shouldn't have such things, but as long as it's not gameplay affecting, it doesn't bother me too much, though just wanted to give you the heads up about that in case it is something that bothers you. Uh, it might affect your uh, decision whether you want to purchase this game or not. But we have a campaign. I have played through all of the campaign. We're going to go back to it. Uh, I haven't done the bonus one down here because I have to beat all of these on expert first. But we're just going to go into one sort of in the middle here. Let's see. Let's Actually, let's do the last one. That way we can see all of the mechanics. It does do a very good job of tutorializing through the campaign and teaching you the mechanics of the game. Yep. Yeah, the Sentinels will not be happy, Logan. Art is pretty good. I like the backgrounds and so on and so forth. Yep, we're just going to skip through this dialogue. The story itself is not particularly engaging for me, but the gameplay is something else entirely. I have not yet played any uh, player versus player, but I've observed some matches, and they do have that in the client itself. You can observe high-ranked matches without having to go to a video site or whatever, which is very good if they're planning to go the esports route with this just going to hold shift here and skip through all this. Want to get to the actual gameplay. Here we go. All right, so here is your layout. Here's drones. They produce a resource. Click to gain one gold there. You have several di different resources, and actually you have different resources depending on which units that the game presents you. Uh, in ranked play or casual play, I, I believe that there are certain ones that are default and then a random set, and then you will actually be given a second row of units here that you can hide or show at your preference. But you can either click and drag over those to collect all the gold, or you can press Q and that will activate all of your drones at once. And I might not do too good on this challenge because I'm going to try to be playing while talking about it, but just like an RTS, your economy is very important. So what we're going to do here is drones produce a gold every turn. 
To build a drone, you need energy, and engineers produce energy. Then we've got Gilded Drone here, which gains two gold at the start of each turn, and so on and so forth. Animus produces the uh, Replicase here, and then there is Blast Forge for the Bohemium. Now, these things right here only last for one turn, so if you don't spend them at the end of the turn, they're gone. The gold is stored every turn if you have any left over and it just builds up and builds up and builds up but we're going to start off trying to get our economy going so I'm going to build two drones and I am going to build an engineer we're going to try to get a massive amount of money as quickly as possible then we can either click in turn hit the space bar and it gives us a chance to commit if we want to go back and change anything we can control Z or click these buttons over here to do that We've also got story elements. I'm just going to click through this to get him off the screen. There we go. Yeah, our unit supplies are limited. When a unit runs out of seeds, you will no longer be able to construct it. And seeds are these little pips at the bottom. We've got a lot of drones available, not so many gilded drones, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, we got it. So we are again going to build... Well, we've got three energy now, and a gilded drone is better than a regular drone because it produces two gold for less gold overall investment, though more energy investment, so we're going to do that. We have hotkeys on the right-hand side here. I don't always remember to use them, but we'll do that. Oh, yeah. Got to collect our gold first. Hit the Q. Then we'll build a gilded drone, so we've got two extra gold coming in. We don't have enough energy to build another drone, but what we should start doing is getting our economy going. Now these over here, as far as I know, the endostructure, gigastructure, exostructure that do different things are unique to the campaign. I don't think they're available in player versus player. Uh, so that's good to know. Also, when you play against someone in player versus player, as far as I can tell, you both have the exact same set of units presented to you to balance it out. So it's entirely strategic. There should be no luck involved, which means uh, when I lose, I have no excuse because I just messed up. But I think that first of all, we want to go ahead and get an Animus going as that's going to use our resources most effectively for this turn. So we'll hit A and do that. Now, these have a time sim symbol here, so they're going to take one turn to come online. We'll go ahead and end the turn. Commit. All right, and in one turn, these are going to start churning out their things. This is going to construct a shield module, a wall, or a model module forge. Uh, Gigastructure makes things that turn into other things, and Exostructure makes attackers. So... We do want to get a defense online at some point, but for now, I think we want to keep developing our economy. We want to get these gilded drones online as quickly as possible, so we're going to build another one of those. And then I think we want a blast forge also, because we need the behemium to build other things like a wall or a steel spitter. Though I think the tarsers are better in this. They do take two turns to build, but they're more efficient as far as gold spending is concerned. So we are going to build a Blast Forge, and that will use most of our gold. We are not yet using our replicates, so that's going to go to waste, but I think we're going to hold on to our gold and pass the turn. Alright, so they've started spitting out stuff. They got a gun bot. This is going to deal a damage every turn, and they've got a Giga Fragment that's eventually going to pair up with other Giga Fragments to build a big attacker. But as always, we want to use our drones. Now, you can choose not to use drones and use them as blockers, which goes into the card game elements of this. Units that are classified as being able to block, you can assign incoming damage to those. We definitely want to build a wall this turn, as it can absorb up to three, and they've only got one coming. So total information is available here, which is awesome. So we definitely want to build a wall that will be able to absorb our enemy's attack. Then we want to continue to pump out Gilded Drones, I think, so we'll grab one of those. And now it's time to start getting our offense online, and we have just enough gold to build two Tarsers. So we're going to do that, and that totally spins all our resources, so that makes this ostensibly a good turn. We're going to pass it. 
Yeah, pumping out a bunch of blockers. Now we have to kill these blocker units before we can directly assign damage to what we want. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll make plenty of shadow things. Just, you know, give us a second. Thank you very much. So, there's one incoming, so we're not in danger of losing anything. We get to assign our defense, so we get to choose what to block with. Uh, just like in a game like Magic the Gathering, though, when we pick what we're blocking with, we have to absorb all the attack damage before we go on to something else. So say this was four, we would probably want to sacrifice, uh, or say it was three, exactly. We'd probably want to sacrifice an engineer so that the wall would only take two and live. But as it is, the wall can just soak it up and we'll lose nothing. And I do want to continue just building our economy. We're going to build another gilded drone. And now we can start building uh, shadow fangs, which is two attack. So we will build what well, we need more animus though. So we need to get another animus structure online. Let's do that. We'll grab that. I uh, think we want to build one more tarser. We don't have enough gold to build more than that. And we're going to need three of these to start killing any of the enemy units. Uh, yeah, we're going to end the turn. Going to lose a few resources, but we get to keep our gold. And again, I may not be doing this optimally because I'm not really focused on doing it optimally, but talking about how the game plays. So a sign, we can absorb two with the wall easily. Also good to note that I can actually hit Q and it will block in a semi-optimal way. There are times when it doesn't block perfectly. Like again, say that we had four damage coming in and we had two walls. Now the game might block with two engineers and then go to one wall, keeping both our walls. Well, strategically, the only time that two walls are better is when there is a whole bunch of damage coming in. Generally, you want to lose your engineers first and try to absorb leftover damage with one huge structure. And uh, yeah, we're gonna assign the defenses there. All right, keep building our economy because just like in StarCraft, that seems to be real important. So we could pump out some drones here. We have enough uh, replicates to make some of these. Uh, I think it's more important at this point to get our offense online. So let's see what we have left after we build those. I could sit here and do the math, but you know, who wants to do that? That's boring. Two incoming, so our wall is fine. We can build two more drones. So let's do that. We have two gold left over. I think that's fine. I'm just going to hold on to this gold. I could build an engineer, but the only thing the engineers are useful for is allowing us to build drones via energy and soaking up damage. So we're going to, so we're just going to end the turn. All right, again, they've only got two damage incoming, so we'll block there. And now they're going to have four. So now we're going to have to start preparing for upcoming things. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab all of that gold. We are again going to build our offensive units, say a two and a T. And now we have enough damage to actually start doing damage to their structures and gradually wearing them down. So that's good for us. I think we want to build a couple of engineers here so that we can soak up damage for our wall. So we're going to do that with the knowledge that we're going to lose two engineers coming up. Then I also think it would behoove us to start pumping out some additional offensive things. So I could go ahead and buy two more drones or I could buy a steel spitter. Actually, I'm all about the gold, so let's buy two more drones. I was going to buy the Steel Spitter, but I talked myself out of it. Alright, so we managed to kill a wall there, which is good. Four incoming, so we're going to sacrifice two of these so that our wall can stay alive. Engineers are extremely expendable. Let's go ahead and do that. It's warning us that with the damage coming in, that it's enough to destroy all of our blockers and have nothing left over, which is awesome. So we are going to start again with our offensive units. We'll get a Shadow Fang and a Tarser. 
worth noting that our offensive units are very weak. See, they only have one health, but that's what our blockers are for, are to protect these. Then, I think we want to buy... So we're going to have to soak up four. So it's probably better to buy a wall here so that we can sacrifice one wall. So we can soak up three and one and then keep one wall alive. That seems good. Then we want to buy a drone and I think I'm going to buy an engineer also so just have more cannon fodder available to us in upcoming turns. Then we'll end the turn, commit. And as long as there's blockers, the opponent gets to assign where the damage goes. Once we blow through all their defensive structures, then we get to assign where the damage goes. So six incoming. So we will do three here and sacrifice actually just one engineer, keep this wall alive. Seem to be doing fairly well in this challenge, but it's meant to be winnable. So good to know. All right, we're starting to get a ton of money. Uh, worth noting that down here, if we don't spend any gold, it's going to show us how much that we'll have of available next turn estimation, as in we could lose units to make that wrong. And as we spend gold, this number will go down also. Well, we want to continue to pump out our offensive units, so we'll do that. The best defense is a good offense most of the time. Then we've got seven incoming, so we want to build another wall. And we want to build some engineers also, but we're going to need to soak up five. And that's going to mean we're losing some engineers, so we will build two engineers. And then I think we're just going to hold on to this gold and roll it over. Uh, get to overrun defenders this turn, so that means we're killing all of their defensive structures. And then we get to sign our own damage. And the first thing you generally want to kill is the gun bots. If you're against an opponent, you might want to consider a person opponent, an actual human. You might want to consider killing their resource makers. But gun bots are what's doing damage to us. So we're going to kill three of those which lowers the incoming damage. And if we had sat here and thought about what we were going to pump out damage wise, we could have avoided building these walls and engineers and stuff because we know that we're going to be reducing their attack and can plan accordingly. But again, not trying to be optimal here, just trying to get the concept of the game across. We'll commit that. All right, four incoming. So we're actually going to sacrifice a wall here and then absorb that. Keeps our engineers alive, so we have more fodder for upcoming turns. It's showing that there's 10 incoming, but we have 14 attack available, so that's five that's going to be able to be absorbed, and then we're going to get to assign damage as we wish. So this number is going to lower. We're going to have nine, and we can kill five, which you can't kill the ones that are building unless they are the last things available. If you kill everything else and then killing the ones that are being built would win you the game, the game will allow you to do that. But we can kill one, two, three, four, four, so at least lower that to six, or we, I think this is building. I'm not for sure, maybe we'll be able to target this, but I think it's being built. But anyway, uh, it's going to be less than 10. So I think we're fine with our defense as is. We're going to lose some number of engineers, so it's probably smart to build a couple of those just to keep our cannon fodder online. But we also do want to keep pumping out offensive units. So we'll go two and a T. We could also start pumping out steel spitters. They cost a bit more and you click them to gain attack. Uh, yeah, we can do a steel spitter and a drone, and I think that's effective resource management for this turn. We'll overrun the defenders, then we have nine to assign, and we can actually click on these that are, uh, have the time on it. Maybe they're just unavailable. So we want to kill those because they're worth one attack each that effectively uses our attack power. Then we'll kill a tough gun bot, so we're lowering their attack to four, and we'll kill the Giga Fragment too. And we're well on our way to winning this challenge. All right, four, so we will sacrifice a couple of engineers, absorb there. Yeah, what do you want, lady? Yeah, vile infections. This is story. 
not interested in story. This is a strategery game, folks. Though sometimes story and strategery games are good. Uh, in defense, we want to get to our offense. Let's keep pumping out tons and tons of gold. We'll do our old standby of building those. Seven coming in. We're going to definitely blow through their defenses and maybe even take out all of their attack. So we are going to focus on offense now. Still want to build a couple of drones that will leave us enough to build a steel spitter too, so we'll do that. Now, uh, steel spitters are a unit that you have to click on to put up their attack because if you don't, then they count as a defensive unit that you can block with, which is, you know, sometimes relevant in the strategy of the fight. So we have 16 to assign, so we will wipe out their attack units. We have one left over. We could assign it somewhere, uh, and it doesn't really matter where, because we can't kill anything else, so we're going to end the turn. And now they have nothing incoming, so we can now cease building defensive structures entirely and go all out. We're definitely going to want to attack with our steel spitters, so we'll do that. We'll build uh, some of these replicate units. We're going to pump out two steel spitters. Well, we don't have enough... Uh, Bohemian, maybe now's the time to build another Blast Forge since we have our economy humming away like a well oiled machine. That leaves us enough to grab a drone. So we're going to overrun the defenders, and it should only be a turn or two more before this is over. We're going to take those out. We've got three left, so we'll grab a Module Forge. Good deal. And the module forges, I should have do, been doing a better job of showing you what these other things do, but in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter that much. Again, the game does an excellent job of explaining mechanics to you, and all information is available. So this, when they click it, gets to construct a shield module. You see a keyword down there. It's not highlighted, but it's prompt, which means that it can block the turn that it's created. A lot of units, like, say, our steel spitters, can't block the turn they're created. They have to wait a turn, uh, which means it's sort of like summoning sickness in a card game like Magic the Gathering. All right, just gonna kinda go on autopilot here. Uh, we are out of Tarsers, so we can't build any more of those, but we can build a Shadow Fang. We can start pumping out all of these Steel Spitters. We still have gold left over, so I think we're going to grab another Blast Forge. Don't have enough gold to buy anything useful. Don't think we want any more engineers. So we're just going to kill all the opponent's stuff that we can. Let's get rid of this since that makes attackers. We'll get rid of this since that makes defenders. Giga structure's not threatening on its own because the uh, Giga fragments it makes don't actually attack on their own. But we'll go ahead and kill it since it makes other things. And then module forges, all they're going to be able to do is pump out shields. And this combat is over. We're just going to do this, not even make anything else, overrun the defenders, and we win. Destroy all enemy units. Good deal. And then it goes on further, and uh, you get some more story, and I think there is another battle or two in this, but we're going to go ahead and leave. That gives a good idea of what the gameplay is like. It's something that I found quite enjoyable. They also have more episodes coming up, uh, coming in April, complete episode two, yeah. And if you get through the campaign and want some more training, they have combat training. I have completed the first two and I'm on seven in this, but it gives very good scenarios that teach you the strategy of the game. Uh, again, I keep comparing this to other things, but I think that's the best way for us to get across what's going on. I'm going to close this go global chat here. <clears throat> that's other players talking about things. Uh, in StarCraft 2, uh, it has such things too to teach you how to play. It gives you scenarios and teaches you different strategies, and I think that is a very good thing. Uh, I can definitely see this being a game that is fun to play, fun to play casually, fun to play ranked. In fact, we can, let's see, where was it at? We can watch. Right now we've got Crash Overlord versus Arcanishu. 
uh, ranked number 14 and number 3. It's in relaxed uh, top live games. Let's uh, let's jump in here. And now we can see people actually playing this, which can also teach us things. As you can see down here in player versus player, there is a turn timer. Each person has their own clock so that someone can't just stall out the game forever and waste all of your time. And you can see a lot more of the available units, different things. They've got a skin on their steel splitter. Rhino is a replicate unit. It can block, but you can also click it to get attack. And then there are great big things like Tatsu Nullifier, which start of the turn we gain two attack. Click, five chill, add five chill to a target. I don't know what that is because I'm not experienced chill yet. This is units can't block if their chill equals or exceeds their health, so that's good. Yeah, just lots of different strategy that can go on. Got the player here emoting to their opponent. Engineer, that's a neat skin for an engineer. But yeah, uh, this is very interesting. So we can actually leave this. And then as you get rewards, you get these things down here. Uh, these are sort of loot boxes, I guess you could say, just by another name. Let's see, I gotta remember how to get into that. Let's see, go back to this. Yeah, it's under customize, and we can drag these here and open them. Again, I'm not real sure how I feel about that. Again, not not a fan of loot box economies in games that cost you money already. But since it's not affecting gameplay, it's not as egregious. That doesn't mean it's totally unforgivable, of course. But uh, as long as you're aware and you're okay with that, then that's fine. So we have to click. These are the things we have available for us to buy. So we're playing a little sort of random game here to get as many points as we can to buy these things. Once we buy them, they're skins and we get to keep them forever. So we're just kind of clicking randomly because it randomized everything. We got one flip left and we can get combinations to get extra things. All right, so we're one off of getting this bonus for 40. Uh, three of each, do that. We have 300 of this premium currency left, which I was awarded. I haven't spent any money on the uh, premium currency myself. We can do this to flip two additional cards, so we might as well. Do that, and we got two combos, so that left us with 140. If I had another 199, I could flip one additional card. But now we get to choose what we want to buy, and we can buy these skins. Five infusions, upgrade your emotes. We can get twin cannon drakes. We can get wary wild drone, that looks cool. We can get Netherlands drone. A uh, lot of things are country flags. I think what I would like out of all of these is this little guy because he's cute, so we'll grab him. I think our leftover uh, gets spent away, warning. Oh, this is an emote here. So we could buy one of these. Uh, let's just take the warning, I suppose. And that is that. We can commit. We are done. And we might as well open another one since I have one left. No, nope. go in there. Thank you very much. Well, just doesn't really matter don't think there's a pattern or if there is I haven't uncovered it in the, just the couple of these things that I've opened so we don't have enough to flip two more cards we have 91 so that's just going to be that we can't buy any of these skins but we can buy some emotes so we'll get both of those got 41 left yeah I can't get anything else and that's fine but I think that that gives a pretty good idea about what's going on here. Uh, if you're interested in like options and things, graphic settings, there's not a whole lot to it, which the game as is doesn't seem to really need a whole lot of options, though I, I would like to see more things added in in the future. The art style, 
I think holds up pretty well with what's available. They've got key bindings, which is essential in a strategy game such as this, and so on and so forth. But I think that that will do it for our first look at Prismata. It is a game that intrigues me with, as I said, one caveat, and that is the real money shop in a game that we're already paying $25 for. But again, if that's something that doesn't bother you since it's only cosmetics, then at least you know up front so you can make an informed decision. And if this is something that you think that you would enjoy checking out, be aware it is in early access. It is not finished yet, but there will be a link in the description to the Steam page if you would like to buy that for yourself and experience this turn-based real-time card game strategy amalgam that I have found quite intriguing. And thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below, it really does help tremendously. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Tevron and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.